Hey guys, it's Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on dermatology. Um, now, this here is going to serve as a review video on the notes that we covered in class. So, dermatology is the study of the integumentary system, otherwise known, uh, we commonly refer to as the skin system. The skin is your large, largest organ, and it's in the outside of your body, it includes uh, several different structures. Uh, and also, dermatology includes diseases of the skin and uh, drugs to treat those diseases. This here is a diagram that I'm going to reference quite a bit during this video um, that uh, you can see already that you have hair, you have some glands, you have different layers uh, that are all to be discussed in this video. So the integumentary system consists of the skin, which is, uh, has two layers, the dermis and the epidermis, some glands, hair, and nails. Uh, skin protects the body and is the first line of defense against certain microorganisms. And also, in our skin, we have nerves that allow us to feel things, so give us the sense of, of touch. The skin contains, uh, consists of two main layers. We have the epidermis, which is categorized as epithelial tissue, and covers the external surface of the body. So everything on the outside, everything that shows, your epidermis is showing. The epidermis also includes the mucous membranes that line the walls of internal cavities that connect to the, inside of the, uh, connect to the outside of the body. The other layer that we have is the dermal layer, the dermis, which is categorized as connective tissue. So uh, this first layer here, that's the epidermis, and then the dermis is this layer here on my diagram that's more in the middle. So to talk about the epidermis first, it is a thin, really thin layer uh, on the outside or the outermost part of your skin. It contains cells that have no nucleuses and are filled with uh, uh, this type of protein called keratin, which is hard and fibrous. So it makes your skin kind of kind of hard uh, in, in some sense. These cells form a protective layer, uh, but they are dead, actually. Most of them are dead. Um, so they are constantly being shed or um, they come off, and uh, that is a process known as exfoliation. Uh, interesting enough, you, if you dust at your house, you are dusting about 80% uh, dead skin cells from your family members. So dust is mostly old dead skin that fell off. Um, more about the epidermis it is the the deepest part of the epidermis is called the basal layer, where actually living cells are dividing and allow and, and as those living cells divide, they push the old ones out, the old dead ones, and that's how we get skin to form in different layers. Uh, in the epidermis, there's really no uh, blood vessels. It receives nutrients and oxygen from the uh, dermal layer, but it, the the epidermal layer itself does not really contain too many blood vessels that nourish the layer itself. Also in the epidermis, we have melanocytes. These are certain types of cells that produce a pigment called melanin, which is dark. Um, the darker you, a person is, the more melanin that they have. Melanin um, is, a, is a dark pigment that prevents too much sun damage from altering DNA. Um, and then if we alter DNA too much, we get mutations. And if we alter DNA too much and with those mutations build up, uh, something known as melanoma or a different type of cancer can form. Uh, this here is a, is a type of skin cancer caused by too much uh, damage from the sun. So to review real quick, the, epider the epidermal layer is this layer here on the outermost part of the skin. It's uh, so this here that I'm that I'm drawing, and the basal layer would be that layer right if you can watch right at the bottom right here, where actually the cells are dividing, and as they divide, they push the old ones out. The next layer that I want to talk about here is the dermal layer, that, or otherwise known as the dermis. It's a thick layer, very spongy, and it's uh, beneath the epidermis. It contains collagen fibers um, and elastic fibers that allow it to be kind of stretchy and squishy. Uh, there also is a lot of arteries, veins, and nerve cells, um, as well as the hair follicles, the sebaceous glands, and the sweat glands. They, these all anchor themselves in the dermal layer. Underneath of the dermal layer is this layer called the subcutaneous layer, which uh, we don't really classify as a real layer, but uh, it is a loose connective tissue that, contain, that, can, that contains mostly adipose tissue or fat. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, it's to provide a layer of insulation to conserve body heat. Um, now, interesting enough, you may know that, you, that in parts of your body are thicker than others, or parts of your skin is thicker than others. That's because the subcutaneous layer, which is composed of mostly fat, can be really thick or really thin. Um, it also acts as a cushion to protect the bones and internal organs. So to review really quick here, the dermal layer, which is what I mentioned first, is this inner layer right here. 
And anchored in the dermal layer are, are hair and different kinds of glands, like this one here, and uh, this type of gland over here. And we also have arteries and, and neurons and veins, all these things right here, extending out into the dermal layer. Then the subcutaneous layer is all of this right here at the bottom. And we don't really classify it as a real layer, but it actually um, contains a lot of different kinds of fats and also is the site where um, those neurons and, and arteries and veins actually come into. I want to talk for a second about these things called spacious glands. They are a type of exocrine, exocrine grant, gland in the dermis that secrete this substance called sebum, which is otherwise known as oil. So when your skin gets really oily, that's actually called sebum. Now sweat glands, um, they help to, they produce sweat, which helps to regulate body temperature, and uh, that is a process known as perspiration. Sweating is known as per perspiration. Uh, sometimes sweat glands are called uh, pseudo, pseudoriferous glands, and they are also known as uh, they are a type of exocrine gland. And sweat itself contains water, different kinds of salts, um, small amounts of body waste. Uh, so it, we can actually um, excrete waste through sweat itself. To review really quickly, right here um, that I am underlining, this is a sebaceous gland right here, and this actually secretes oil, otherwise known as sebum onto hair itself, so which is one of the reasons why people should or hopefully do take a shower every day to get rid of that, that greasy, nasty oil that is otherwise known as sebum produced by the sebaceous gland. Then right here, uh, this is a sweat gland, and that is where we are going to get uh, sweat produced, and you can see that the, it has a duct that releases onto the surface of skin, so you actually sweat on the surface of your skin. The next thing I want to talk about is hair which covers most of the body, everything except for your palms of your feet and the, uh, the palms of your hands and the bottoms of your feet. You, when you go through puberty, uh, sometimes additional hair will form in places that it never was. Um, hair is, co comes from this hair follicle which is anchored in the dermis. So right here, this is a hair, and it's anchored down here in what's known as a hair follicle. Melanocytes, once again, those cells that produce mel melanin, uh, give color to the hair. The more melanin you have, the darker your hair is. Also, these cells are, are, are filled with that protein keratin, which makes the hair shaft actually kind of strong. Now, usually, hair will lie real flat on the surface of your skin, but uh, when, things, when it gets real cold out or when you get nervous, that hair can stand up on the end. It's called goosebumps, and that's called pilo erection. The word pilo is a vocab word in this unit, and that means hair, so hair erection. And that is caused by this little erector muscle that's next to every hair follicle. Right here in my diagram, I, uh, I just bolded where uh, an erector muscle is. So to review real fast, all of this here is a, is a hair. Um, it, it's anchored by this hair follicle here at the bottom. And then this right here, which I am now bolding, is a uh, little muscle that allows that hair to stand up on end, called pilo erection. The next thing that we find in the integumentary system is these things called nails. They are on uh, your toes and the ends of your fingers. Each nail consists of a nail plate, a nail bed, a cuticle, a lanula, and a nail root. So the nail plate is commonly what we refer to as the nail itself. The nail bed is what's underneath where the nail is, li which is, where the nail is lying on. And the, the lanula right here is the area where actually the, the nail is, is growing. Um, and the cuticle is that little flap of skin that is on the end of the, uh, uh, that's on the top of the nail, helps to give it a little bit of protection. So to review real quick, here we have the nail plate. That's what we kind of refer, refer to as a nail. And then the lanula is the area that, that grows and extends that nail out, pushing old, uh, old cells out. And that, go, that will conclude dermatology. Again, this was Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.